Diastolic function may seem complex, but at its core lies a fundamental physiological event, the act of relaxation of the left ventricle. In his landmark 1976 study, Dr. Weisfeld demonstrated that the maximum rate of decline in left ventricular pressure, negative DP slash DT max, occurs shortly after aortic valve closure. To quantify this process, he introduced tau, the left ventricular diastolic time constant, which quickly gained recognition as a gold standard index for assessing diastolic function. Given this central role, the ASE's diastolic function guidelines should offer clear instructions on how to measure tau non-invasively in the echocardiography, echo lab. Every other diastolic parameter is indirect. Without tau, diastolic assessment becomes fragmented and incomplete, akin to the fable of the blind men and the elephant. The first ASE guideline on diastolic function released in 2009, endorsed a tau formula proposed by Dr. James Thomas, a respected cardiologist from Harvard. Unfortunately, the formula relied on bold assumptions that undermined its theoretical integrity. At the time, I submitted a letter to Jace challenging this recommendation and proposing an alternative, mathematically grounded method for calculating tau. In 2011, during the ASE scientific sessions in Montreal, I was invited to demonstrate my method to Dr. Sharif Nege, then chair the guideline writing group. He was well-versed in the mathematics and responded positively to my approach. Yet the 2016 guideline update continued to promote the Harvard method. Perplexed, I contacted Dr. Nege for clarification. His response was that the formula had been clinically validated. That so-called validation was conducted at the Cleveland Clinic and published in circulation. In my view, the data were clearly manipulated. The odds of achieving such favorable results by mere chance are vanishingly small. In 2019, a paper titled, The Harvard Method of Tau Calculation is Incorrect, laid bare the logical flaws of Dr. Thomas's approach. Meanwhile, my formula was independently verified and applied clinically. Notably, in 2017, Mindre, China's largest medical equipment manufacturer, adopted my method and commercialized it under my family name. Ahead of the 2025 guideline update, I publicly urged ASE to include a scientifically valid non-invasive tau measurement method. On July 3, 2025, the third ASE guideline was officially released. After decades of endorsement, Dr. Thomas's flawed formula was finally removed. I believe my years of advocacy contributed to this reversal, and such a significant correction should be openly acknowledged. Without transparency, this becomes a stale correction. Regrettably, the new guideline offers no method at all for measuring town non-invasively, not mine, nor anyone else's. This omission is both puzzling and disappointing. It raises the uncomfortable possibility that political considerations have once again overshadowed scientific clarity. Studies comparing tau-based assessment with previous guideline-based methods suggest that up to one-third to one-half of diastolic dysfunction diagnoses may be inaccurate. I fear the new guideline will do little to change this. Given the widespread prevalence of HFP if heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, a condition that hinges on accurate diastolic evaluation, the implications could be grave. Tens of thousands of misdiagnoses every single day. ASE guidelines are among the most influential in global cardiology. In the past, endorsing Dr. Thomas's formula was tantamount to declaring the emperor's new clothes. Now... By omitting any valid method for measuring tau, the 2025 guideline once again leaves clinicians in the position of the blind men and the elephant. Try to assess diastolic function without the only gold standard index available. Last but not least, I urge every clinician and scientist to take the time to compare non-invasive tau measurement with the current guideline-based approach. Trust careful measurement. Trust common sense. And above all, Trust yourself.